in this lecture we are going to learn about what are processes and what are threads and what is the difference between them so why do we need processes and threads we want our computer to do multi programming so run multiple we want that our computer should be running multiple applications simultaneously okay so that we can enjoy it in full we would not like that if i am running a windows media player and listening to some song <coughs> then i cannot do programming but i want that that there should be some protection that both of these applications okay so one of them does not crash the system okay so this is there next we will see so solution is process okay so each application so they are basically processes and process unit of execution so they are programs in execution and they are allocated memory and resources so what happens is it's kind of virtual machine abstraction so give process each of the process an illusion that each of them have a, their own cpu okay all the resources they think to them it's visible that each of them owes owns the cpu they have their own memory and input output devices and this is done how via multiplexing multiplexing means for short duration of time you keep on giving these resources to each of the multiple processes then what happens what is the challenge here so the challenge is let's say so one of the important challenge is that you have multiple processes and i'm saying that they are running some piece of code okay or executing some instructions then when so it's simply the same person here okay who is doing the work so cpu is one and he is doing all these works so what he does that he has got five work okay so he will for some period of time he will do w1 then he will go to w2 then he will go to w3 and then to w5 and keep on repeating like this so what happens is that he needs a lot of context switch okay so that is context change is something for example if you are re reading now history and suddenly for example you now switch on to mathematics so you have to make some kind of context switch that now you were reading some historical notes suddenly you switch to some equations and all and then you need some kind of concurrency so these are the things now what happens even in case of uh, so multi programming is allowed with help of processes that they are separate execution units are there but now what happens let's take one example of a web server okay so if we take an example of a web server so web server handles some requests are coming lot of requests are coming to it now one thread is listening to all the requests so one person let's say he is listening to all the request but what happens if he takes one request and then starts processing at the same time some other requests can come and they have to wait so your web server will become unresponsive very slow so i want that this thread will just take the request then he will handle it make it handled by other threads okay and threads are basically inside one application or process you can spawn multiple threads so they are also parallelly they can execute so one thread can accept the request and then he can dispatch dispatch other threads to do the work so this is the solution so now for multi programming basically you can have processes but in a single process if you want multiple like concurrency like lot of works happening parallelly so you need threads so threads for example your uh, any application you see in gaming console let's say so a lot of threads should be there one thread is handling the gui so what is coming on the screen other one is handling what you are pressing and how it is working so this is there so putting together now looking at process so we have process and let's see what all it needs so we have one example here so there is a function a which takes one 
argument int if it is less than 2 it calls b then it prints that value b in turn calls c c calls a of 2 okay and then we call a of 1 so whenever a process is executing so what all it needs okay so it needs something to execute what all resources first is of course it will need the cpu okay so cpu is the one who executes instructions then it will need to maintain pc which is the program counter so you have a program counter which tells that okay i'm executing which line of code so there are a lot of instructions at which instruction i'm presently executing then you have a stack pointer so stack pointer basically we see that from a we are calling function a we are calling b from b we are calling c from c uh, we are calling again a so lot of functions are being called and they are pushed onto the stack so here if you see first a is called so a is pushed on the stack then from a you call b so b will be pushed on the stack function b along with its arguments and return value so here you will have the arguments and return value then from b you have c from c you have a and while you return you pop these items so when we return from a so we pop out a then from c when we return we pop out c then when we return from b we pop out b and finally we pop out a when we return from there so this is the stack pointer so it tells that okay in your particular process which function is on the top which is the one that is being called now then we have many other things memory so here in on the memory so this is the stack pointer so which function i'm on right now there is a min memory you have stack where you have your local variables and your function arguments and so on which was told here and pointer is basically which one i'm pointing to then you have the input output state okay which files i'm handling okay which sockets are open in the network and context so these are the things registers are there cpu registers that i'm using for calculation so these things are there for a process so these are the resources these are sequential instruction streams and stored in os these are the cpu state like the program counter and stack pointer now putting it all together so processes so when you have lot of applications running so they will all be being be handled by processes process one process two till process n so lot of processes you are running and you are enjoying your computer your machine each of the processes so they have a feeling that okay so they are seeing that they have their own memory they have their own input output devices and they own everything on your machine but actually it is not true but operating system presents this view to the processes and it thinks that it has got all the cpu so cpu but what it does it schedules all these processes and if your cpu it has just got one cpu they will all be multiplex that okay some time will be given for process one then for process two process n then again process one process two cyclically they will be going on switching overhead is high because a process has got a lot of things okay so when one process is executing and then let's say it has to context switch to another process okay so when that needs to be executed so what happens switch overhead is high so cpu state you have to check okay so then memory input output whatever was there in the memory so like what functions were being called all those are stored in the memory so func stack pointer what are the arguments return values process creation is also a lot of resources you have to give to so memory cpu and all so it's high protection yes each of the processes should have their own memory input output so protection is high and sharing overhead is also high sharing means you share with your other processes so now here it is one process at the time is being executed by cpu what happens now let's say that we have lot of cores in our cpu here about dual core machines okay you quad core and also they have a lot of processors so here this has a quad core four cores are there here and your cpu now what happens it has the flexibility 
that it can execute four of processes really parallelly no multiplexing they can be done parallelly so core 1 core 2 core 3 core 4 all of them can run one process each okay so these four can be run directly so switching overhead now it's low okay because now what happens and thread creation so multi cores now you have less number of context switches will happen okay and memory input output still you might have the same number of input output devices so that will be there okay so this is there for your multiple core system four threads at a time can run now if there is hyper threading also so i have four cores in that now i can make multiple threads for each of the cores so now we have processes so each process so they have i have a parallelism of eight okay here so this is called hyper threading eight threads at a time can run now each process so what all things bookkeeping i need to do so i need to have a process state what state is in is it running now the code for that particular process what is the process identifier number what is the program counter what are the registers there so many things list of open file descriptors and so on so this is there and then cpu when it is switching from one process to other so basically what it needs to do is that you whatever is the present process store the process control block into the memory and bring the new process so process p0 is executing now what you do save the pro process control block okay then you reload the process control block in the memory for process 1 execute it some interrupt came that okay now you have to end this process and execute the save so you save state for pcb1 again load reload pcb0 and execute that okay so this is called the context switch and overhead sets minimum practical switching time so you need to have so this is basically your context switch is happening when processes so here what is happening we are changing the process so there is one cpu and that is the person who is going to execute different processes each process we saw how many things they maintain so they have first thing is of course uh, lines of code or instructions they need to execute so when i'm executing process 0 and i come to process 1 so what will happen i need to first thing is again because this process 0 is not complete and let's say out of 100 lines of code i have written 50 lines i have executed so i should save it that okay when i come back i should know that 50 lines had already been executed i should start from the 51st line then some values are there in the registers i was there in a function which is there was function a i started with a called b so i should know with the stack pointer value which function i was in so these values are stored in the process control block block it is saved and then what happens when i am executing the process one now i should load that into the memory the process control block for that and in that i know that okay in the 200 lines of instructions i am now at the 75th line so i should execute now the 76th line and so on and i should know that okay there was a network connection open between some google.com and so on so each of the things should be brought into our memory